We continue with our evening lectures and obviously we have a very special lecture tonight. One of the great philosophers in our program is the one we love very much because he is in so many ways a role model for us in his quirky, always non-traditional, always never like the other style. Uh, <laughs> last time he came here and said, I wish I could have sent my clone, you know, so we not, that never know who is here tonight. And he would love you all to learn German, so next time he can deliver all French, both is fine with him. And as you know, I consider not only to let people into the program in the future who speak either one. Anyway, Jean Baudrillard is a philosopher always of the Höhe der Zeit, always addressing what's going on in, in life. It's not running back to the Greeks, so he's running forward into the future. And we wish to follow him, please. <laughs> So, I apologize for my English name. We will speak about uh, the violence of the image and the violence told to the image. Uh, at first, uh, we will point at three forms of violence. The primary form is that of aggression, of oppression, of rape and uh, spoiling. The unilateral violence of the most powerful. Another form is that of the historical, of critical violence, the violence of the negative and the transgression of revolt and revolution, including maybe the violence of analysis and the interpretation. Both are determined forms of violence, effects that are related to specific causes and to whatever form of transcendence, be it that of power, of history or of meaning. These are, I would say, the violence of a first type and of a second type. But now we have to deal with the violence of a third type, a very different one, more radical and subtle, the violence of deterrence, of consensus and control, of hyperregulation and deregulation together, the violence of the virtual, a meta-violence, in some way. A violence of forced consensus and interaction, which are like the plastic surgery of the social, therapeutic, genetic, communicational and informational violence, but first of all, the violence of transparency, which tend to eradicate by the way of prophylaxis, of physical and mental regulation, the very rules of evil, of negativity and singularity including the ultimate form of singularity, which is death itself. Violence of a general extradition of conflict, of death. Violence which paradoxically puts an end to the violence itself, and which therefore cannot be balanced except with radical denegation, with pure abreaction to the whole state of things a pure violence without object anymore, without determination. This is a typical violence of information, of media, of images, of the spectacular, connected to a total visibility, a total elimination of secrecy, be it of a psychological or mental, or of a neurological, biological or genetic order, Soon we shall discover the chain of revolt, the center of violence in the brain, perhaps even the chain of resistance against genetic manipulation. Biological brainwashing, brainstorming, brain lifting, with nothing left but recycled, whitewashed, lobotomized people, as in uh, clockwork orange. At this point, we should not speak of violence anymore, but rather of uh, violence, inasmuch that it does not work frontally, me mechanically, but by, by, by contiguity, by contamination, along chain reactions, breaking our secret immunities, and operating not just by a negative effect, 
like the classical violins, but on the contrary by an excess of the positive, just as a cancer cell proliferates by metastasis, by restless reproduction, and an excess of vitality. That is the point in the controversy about the violence of the screens and the impact of images on people's minds. The fact is that the medium itself has a neutralizing power, counterbalancing the direct effect of the violence on the imagination. I would say the violence of the third type annihilates the violence of the first and second type, but at the price of a more violent intrusion in the deep cells of our mental world. The same as for antibiotics. They eradicate the agents of disease by reducing the general level of vitality. When the medium becomes a message, that's McLuhan, of course, then violence as a medium becomes its own message, a messenger of itself. So the violence of a message cannot be compared with the violence of the medium as such, with the violence emanating from the confusion between medium and message. It is the same with viruses. The virus also is information, but of a very special kind. It is medium and message, agent and action at the same time. This is, that is the very origin of its violence, of its uncontrollable proliferation. In fact, in all actual biological, social or mental processes, violence has substituted uh, violence. The traditional violence of alienation, of power and oppression has been superated by something more violent than violence itself, the violence, the violence. And while it was an historical and uh, individual subject of violence, there is no subject, no personal agent of violence, of contamination, of chain reaction, and then no possibility to confront it efficiently. The classical violence was still haunted by the specter of the evil. It was still visible. A violence only transcends. It is of the order of transparency, and its logic is that of the transparency of the evil. The image, and more generally the sphere of information, is violent because what happens there is the murder of the real, the vanishing point of reality. Everything must be seen, must be visible, and the image is the site par excellence of its visibility. But at the same time, it's the site of its disappearance. And that something in it has disappeared, has returned to nowhere, makes the very fascination of the image. Particularly in the case of all professional images, of press images, which testify of real events, in making reality even the most violent emerge to the visible, it makes the real substance disappear. It's like the myth of uh, Eurydice, when Orpheus turns around to look at her. She vanishes and returns to hell. That is why the more exponential the marketing of images is growing, the more fantastic, <coughs> uh, the more fantastic grows the indifference towards the real world. Finally, the real world becomes a useless function, a collection of phantom shapes and ghost events. We are not far from the silhouettes on the walls of the cave of Plato. A wonderful model for this uh, forced visibility was a big brother and all similar programs, uh, reality shows, uh, docu soaps, and so on. Just there, such that there, where everything is given to be seen, 